H2 inside the, the handout is um, so, some concepts. And some of these should sound familiar to you because they are at Larry in, in, in practice. So um, first, uh, let's talk about these four truths. The, the first truth is that human beings can learn, change, and grow. And people can learn, change, and grow even when we see the opposite. Or, we, or when we don't necessarily, um, we're working with a client and they don't seem to be moving in the direction that they say they want to or that we think that they could move to. Um, but it's not our job to judge whether or not they can or not. Our job is to keep the light on. Right? And our job is also to keep the light on so long that if we decide to leave, they know where the light is where the light is. And so that, that becomes our job, to, to keep hope that people can change, to give them opportunities to change, even in the face of, of the contrary, but that we know that they can change. Who I am today is not who I was at 17. Thank God. Right? <laughs> you know, and who I am today is not who I'm going to be a year from now, because the choices that I make every day shape and change and mold who I am as well as the context also changes, and we'll, we'll spend some time talking about that as well. Um, people do what they think works even when what? It doesn't. Even when it doesn't work, right? And why do they do what they think works even when it doesn't work? Because it's what they're used to. Because it's what they're used to. It's still serving them in some way. It's still serving them in some way. all they know. It worked at one time. It worked in the past. Right? So whatever behavior that they're exhibiting, and, it, and it's not working, it's not functional, it's not getting them where they want, they're, they're, they're using that behavior because at some point in the past, it worked. And so when will they change their behavior? So if it's worked in the past, and I see a similar situation now, I'll use that behavior. And so it's logical to believe that if they use it in the past and they'll use it now, that they'll also use it when? In the future. In the future. So when does behavior change happen? When people realize it doesn't work anymore and they stop being afraid of change. Okay. When people realize that it doesn't work any longer and they stop being afraid of change. And so then we start trying new things because we're not afraid of change. We understand that that's not working. Even though my grandmother used to do it, even though my grandfather used to do it, my great-grandfather used to do it, it, it doesn't work now. It doesn't work for me. Right. And so those are the kinds of things when we start talking about career development. We have to keep, help people keep in mind that if you keep doing what you've always done, you will continually get the same results. And anything else is insanity. Right? Um, next is that all human behavior is goal-directed. That even though I may not necessarily understand why someone is doing what they're doing, I don't have to. I don't have to understand. But I do have to understand that somehow they're, trying, they're getting something out of this, or they think that they're getting something out of this, or they hope to get something out of this, right? out of this particular behavior, whatever that behavior is. Um, and then lastly, that an attitude is a response or a reaction to a goal. All too often, particularly as practitioners and helpers, people will give us attitude, so we pay attention to the attitude as opposed to actually paying attention to their behavior. Go ahead. Right. I just had to come because we were talking about career stuff. Uh, I was a mentor for someone who says uh, they were complaining about the job in the organization. This organization doesn't get in. They just don't get in. They just don't get it. And how many times have you had this problem? Well, I had this problem before, but see, that company, they didn't get it either, and they didn't get it, and they get, didn't get it. But then... Well, I have to admit that one job, maybe a little bit was my fault, but no, no, because these other people didn't get it either. And so 
they really believe that they didn't need to change their behavior. They just they just happen to keep landing at the place that doesn't didn't understand. Didn't right. You know, because they're for the greater good of the people. It was boundary violations. And they really can't understand why they can't have a relationship stronger than what the rules apply or say. So they feel they're doing man overall a good service, but it's the companies that are failing this employee to do a good job. Yeah, and, and n n now I'm going to say something that is going to be controversial and it's a little bit risky, um, but, but I trust you because you have a great teacher and you're in a great institution. Um, so sometimes particularly minority groups, and I'll specifically talk about one in particular, um, African Americans will sometimes use what has been termed the race card when, when sometimes they, they can't produce types of behaviors that are acceptable. Um, women will do a similar thing, right? Um, one of the things that I thought was, was very interesting um, was that when I was the affirmative action officer for Anoka County, just before performance appraisals would start coming out, people would start asking for disability allowances for their behavior. And so, um, so you know, um, I'm going to be written up for uh, for coming to work late. But now I need a I need a, 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 a an allowance for my disability because I have sleep apnea and so I can't sleep at night which is why I come late for work. So w what are these, in these particular cases, w what are people trying to to do by bringing up, you know, um, you know, that's racism or that's sexism or, or, you know, I have this disability or I, you know, or, you know, Jim, you and I, we went golfing yesterday. You know, cut me a break. So, you know, what are they trying to, to have us focus on? Something other than the behavior. Something other than the behavior, right? And so, um, as practitioners, sometimes we can get caught up or get sucked into that. Here, here's another example of that. Um, so, my, uh, my parents had a rule in the house. And the rule was... Do not talk back. That was the rule. Right? So I tell you to do something, you do it. Because I'm not going to tell you anything that's going to hurt you or, or anything like that, so you do it. And so uh, this particular day, uh, I think I, I was around you know, 15 or so, my dad said, boy, take out the trash. Now, for a long time, I thought my name was boy. <laughs> because that's, that's how my dad would address me. Right? He'd be like, boy, take out the trash. Dad... Why do I have to take out the trash? What did I just do? I talked back. What's the rule? You don't talk back. So what does my dad say? Boy, why are you talking back to me? You know you take out the you know uh, you know you don't you don't talk back to me. What, what, what's wrong with you? Well, Dad, I just blah 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 blah. So now my dad and I are engaged about me talking back, and then my dad gets upset. He says, "Boy, you're on punishment. Go to your room." Oops. Then you take out the trash. And <laughs> I'm like, oh, I won. <laughs> what? Because I didn't take out the trash because we were talking about my attitude. Um, but then, you know, you know, parents get hit pretty quick, right? And so finally, you know, my, my dad got hip to what was happening, and he said, boy, take out the trash. And I'd say, Dad, why do I got to take out the trash? It's all the other kids. They're over there playing Atari, and they could be taking out the trash. You know? and, and guess what my dad said? Take out the trash. Yeah. <laughs> but Dad, why, man, why do I got to be the one? Oh. Take out the trash. Take out the trash. Take out the trash. He kept me focused on what? On what the goal was, what he wanted me to do. And a lot of times, people's attitudes get us all caught up in all this. You know, um, Atla talks about the, the main ring and the side, the side ring or the side circus, right? So, we, you know, we're supposed to be focusing on the main tent, 
But folks want to focus on the, the stuff. And you really, one of the things that folks will start telling you, particularly, like, that was a great example, where this person, every, everything was everybody else's fault. And that typically happens when we have a person who's not confident in their performance and their ability to perform, or they actually can't perform. I don't know if you've experienced that in the workplace, where you have someone who is the social butterfly in the office. It's been, it's been at least in my experience, it's been very rare that I've seen the, the social butterfly in the office actually produce superior work. Not just, not just run-of-the-mills, but superior work. They're usually either catching up on stuff or running slightly behind because they're blah, blah, blah. But what they're doing is they want to build all this social capital because their work product does not, is not up to par in, in some way, some shape, some form, some fashion. And so, so there's that. So those are the four, the four truths about human beings. Um, that when we move towards our goals, we're said to be proactive. Right? We're so, uh, uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, Stephen Covey talks about that, right? Um, that we're proactive, but when we move away from our goals, we're said to be reactive, right? And so it, it, a good example of that is if it's raining, um, if I'm proactive, what do I do when it's raining? Bring an umbrella. I bring an umbrella, right? When I am reactive, I don't go outside because the rain is, you know, I might get wet, <laughs> right? So, so that's an, another way of thinking about that. Um, and so ultimately the goal that people have that they're either moving towards or moving away from is significant safety and belonging. So there, so significance basically says that I am a person of purpose and power. I have the ability to do things, to create things, to contribute. I, I have significance. And I would tell my, my middle school students, uh, if you've never been a winner, you've at least won once. At least once. When you think of all the, the, the millions of, of cells that were a part of your father's <laughs> yes, yes. genetic makeup, <laughs> and only one of them made it to the egg, and it was... You, you were a winner once, which means you can be a winner again, <laughs> right? And so we all have a purpose. All those other ones didn't make it, but you did. So there's some significance to your existence. And so we, we have to help people recognize that they, they are producers. And so half the fun of life is trying to find out what your significance is. The other half is deciding what your significance is. I am a pretty decent teacher. I've decided that. That's something I'm going to be. I'm going to be a halfway decent human being. I've decided that. I don't have to try to find myself. And that, that's one of the things I was telling my niece. She's a sophomore in college. She says, I have to find myself. I said, you can do that or you can decide what kind of person you're going to be. That's up to you. To You can make that, that distinction. Um, so there's that. And then belonging, that we need to be in relationship with other, other human beings. That my humanity is best expressed when I recognize your humanity, and then I'm in the service of you, and not just of myself. I need to, I need to be in service of myself, but not me exclusively. Right? Because when, we don't, when we're not balanced in that way, then we end up with a, a hole in our soul where we become the center of the universe, and then we're disappointed when the universe doesn't respond <laughs> to, to every, uh, all of our whims because we're, we're just a part of it as opposed to being the center. And then lastly, we need to be in environments where we're physically, emotionally, spiritually, psychologically safe, that we're in um, environments that, that nurture us, that, don't, that aren't trying to destroy us, so that we can live out our first two purposes of significance and belonging. And so we're, we're looking for those, those, that safety. Um, and then typically, 
what folks don't really think about is this this concept of respect and i don't know if you grew up with you know older folks in your families or what not but adults were really quick to say this one phrase you have to earn my respect